Introduction. Awe, fear, a trigger, and doubt. In a letter to a friend, C.S. Lewis said, My feeling about people in whose conversion I have been allowed to play a part is always mixed with awe and even fear, such as a boy might feel on first being allowed to fire a rifle. The disproportion between his puny finger on the trigger and the thunder and lightning which follow is alarming. And the seriousness with which the other party takes my words always raises the doubt whether I have taken them seriously enough myself. Think of me as a fellow patient in the same hospital who, having been admitted a little earlier, could give some advice. I think of these words of C.S. Lewis often. I know that I'm just one guy, and I am more aware than anyone else besides God and my wife what a sinner I am. However, I've learned that my own sin and weakness should never be an excuse that keeps me from sharing what I've learned, especially about my relationship with God. That would be what's called false humility, a disease that far too many people, and therefore the world, have been infected by. My reason for writing this book is simply to encourage you to deepen your own personal relationship with God. I promise to share with you only the things that have really helped me, in the hope that they will help you. I'm going to stick to the basics, sharing with you the tools I believe will help you stay connected to God, whether you are a beginner in this journey or a veteran. Some things may speak to you at this moment in your life, and some not so much. But you might want to consider rereading this book periodically, since your relationship with God, and mine, is constantly changing and growing. And, since different tools will therefore be more helpful than others at different times. Though I believe that this book will be helpful to anyone who wants to grow in his or her faith, it is written specifically with teenagers in mind. It is for the teenagers I've met and will continue to meet as a youth minister. It's for those I will never meet, but who may happen to pick up the book. And it's for my own children, all of whom are teenagers right now. The title of this book comes from a simple analogy that I frequently share with teenagers on confirmation retreats with the REAP team, the ministry that I coordinate in the Archdiocese of St. Louis. The analogy goes like this. In some ways, we are all like a glass of milk. We're created good, but we have the potential to be more than we already are. The gift of the Holy Spirit is, in some ways, like chocolate syrup. It is poured into our lives when we're baptized as a free gift from God. But often it just sits there, inactive, at the bottom of the glass. All of that power, the power through which the universe was created, is within each one of us. And yet our lives, like the milk, remain unchanged unless the Holy Spirit is stirred up. This stirring up begins when we make a commitment to Jesus. And it continues as we take steps to grow closer to Jesus. And any time we cooperate with God's grace and allow the Holy Spirit to be stirred up in our lives, our lives become sweeter, not always easier, but more and more full with a certain knowledge of how much God loves us and wants to be with us at all times. This concept of stirring it up is not a new idea, by the way, as it's referenced in the Bible. We read in the second letter of Paul to Timothy, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. For the sake of my analogy, I think it would be fair to paraphrase the scripture passage. I remind you to stir up the Holy Spirit in your life so that your life may be so much more than boring white milk. Rather, that it will become rich, flavorful chocolate milk. For God wants us to experience the power of His Spirit so that we will not be afraid, but rather be full of power and love and self-control. Again, it is my hope and my prayer that each chapter of this book will give you practical tips for growing closer to Jesus and therefore will result in the Holy Spirit being more stirred up in your life. Finally, I want to acknowledge that I am indebted to countless saints living on earth and in heaven 
for any wisdom in this book. If this book contained only my wisdom, it would be way shorter and far less wise than it is.